uh, development for um, the Olympics. They look fantastic. It's going to, I think it's going to be quite embarrassing for the Olympics when people come and visit the city. And yeah, that's going to be look really nice. And they come out here and it like, looks like this. So I mean, it would be a shame to see a building go up here rather than have it as an open space that everybody what could use. Everybody has their own agenda for, for this Olympics as far as I'm concerned. When the Olympics is over, uh, you've only got to look at uh, previous Olympics. Look at Greece, you know, look at Athens, look at, uh, look at Canada, you know, they're still paying for it now. The Olympic site, which was, used to be a beautiful green fields and orchards, um, they literally destroyed everything but the one tree that is just over to your left. Um, I've got the car park and I've got the media centre, so all the, all the beauty is gone. Yeah. Like the Olympics is coming, that's it, bang on. Okay. Once the Olympics is finished, everyone will know about Hackney. They took every single tree and bush and piece of greenery away and Obviously you can hear noise from them constantly, the dirt is coming constantly and we just wanted a little bit of greenery. Situated on the historic east end of London and being one of the most disadvantaged and deprived areas in England, Hackney Week is going to hit global agenda this year, becoming a host of 2012 Olympic Games. The strategic regeneration framework adopted by Hackney Council is aimed to make Hackney Week a center of development and revival, directly benefiting the local community. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, Hackney Week was prospering well populated industrial zone. The area was severely damaged during the World War II bombings, causing many of the industry to shut down. Most of its population left the area. This shift continued to the end of the 20th century. Recently, some of the remaining industry was shut down. A number of residents were displaced because of Olympic Park. Today, Hackney Week is home to around 11,000 people. The wide-scale urban regeneration plans and policies include mass transformation of urban open spaces, the environmental legacy of these transformations for the Olympic Games is still to be explored. But one of the important questions is, are there any open spaces that are left out of mainstream planning? And in your opinion, what was the idea of the planners when they developed this place? <laughs> well, I mean, I have got quite low opinions of planners, so um, I suspect that they had a bit of empty space and they thought, I don't know what we're going to do with this, <laughs> so we'll just build this here. That would be my opinion, but hopefully I'm wrong and it was all planned. I think it looks like they haven't thought anything here. I think it was just an ambition. They were thinking about that. This is a byproduct. When planners develop original later space, they potentially create residual spaces. Spaces that are left out of the mainstream planning process or social transformation. The residual spaces could be abandoned spaces or simply places that have been forgotten. I think these areas are good. It's, a, it's a, you know parts of London that people don't know exist. They, mm. they um, you know, go on these roads here and they never even know that if they come five minutes down here, there's a place here and you can look out over the river. I wanted to be on the map, on the map of the world. Nobody knows about this place. I think it's great. I wish more people knew about it. <laughs> It's ugly, ugly and messy and needs redoing and it smells. People use it as a public toilet. <laughs> I think it looks like a waste of space. I think it looks uh, potentially quite dangerous where people might come to take drugs or sleep if they're homeless. Um, and it looks like some project has been started and maybe abandoned. I don't think I've ever seen anyone sitting here. So. I'm hopeful that after the games, uh, the area will be used more. It looks really rough, like, you know, with um, all the, um, how do you call that, graffiti. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look nice. Residual spaces could be compared to orange bits. 
Some people just like the juice and prefer to throw away the remaining bits of oranges because it doesn't seem tasty to them. However, for others, these bits seem to be delicious and much more useful than the juice itself due to vitamin C. In a similar way of relativity, throughout the urban planning process, the developers might also put aside certain spaces or might find them valuable to use. What makes the developers value some spaces more than the others? One major reason is profit. Apart from rare exceptions, profit is what mainly drives the urban planning nowadays, largely causing social and environmental injustice. Some spaces generate more profit than others, and those that don't could potentially become residual spaces. However, residual spaces have the potential to be reclaimed and become parks, natural reserves, or communal areas. They can be reclaimed and transformed by the community itself, or they can be built upon by authorities or by private investors, which in some occasions make them private. But what is the potential of residual spaces in Hackneywick to be transformed for environmental justice? There are different ways. As a compensation for lost spaces, the Hackney Council granted funds to Hackney Week community groups for improving green open spaces and promoting sport and leisure activities. Community groups were asked to submit proposals for consideration. Out of about 50 applications received by the Council, 24 were selected. The Albion Kids Show is a children's charity since 1984 which delivers free play to children and young people in Hackney. They visit estates and set up play areas where no play facilities exist. The Mabley Green Boulder is a sculpture made by an artist named John Fracklett and given to Mabley Green in 2008 as part of the Hackney Week Festival. The boulder is used for climbing. It's just a rock, if you know what I mean. People do climb on it, mm. you know what I mean, because that's what it's there yeah. for. I don't think people mind it there. It's not representing nothing, it's not like because so-and-so used to work here years ago or something to do with the Olympics, it just seems silly. I don't see the point of the stone, it's nice, but um, but I don't know what else could be put there, so yeah. I think it's alright. It's quite nice having it there, it's a good centrepiece, you get rock climbers and people do things around it, you know, so Please. it's quite nice. Please. It's made it better, it's you know, given the centre to the park, to this area. It's given it like a centre. They spend money wasting on rocks on the, the, the Mabley Common on the other side of this mm, here. Yeah, yeah. The rock, you know, because yeah. they've got the money and they've got to use it by a certain date. What do we do with it? Buy a rock. You know, stick it in the middle of a football pitch. What's that? Yeah. It has been approved. It has been approved. And it was supposed to have happened last year. Mm -hmm. And then Hackney said they wouldn't do it. And then it was going to happen this year, and it still hasn't happened. Why? Uh, well, it was found that there are only few people from the community knowing about the REAPS contest. Have you heard about the REA, the Recreation and Environmental Action Program? No. No, I didn't say. Okay. No. 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 No, no. no honestly, no. no. <laughs> Community members affectionately call the Leebank Square a purple garden as they have tried to improve their neighbourhood through day-by-day -day joint volunteer action. Uh, have you took part in the when they were building the, that space, the, the no, garden? No, I didn't. In all honesty, um, mm. I've, I've supplied some pots and stuff like that, mm. which I was going to throw away, which I gave to Shano, who lives up there. Mm. Um, and um, we've had a barbecue up there once, which oh. is really nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> You've been up there, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you like this place? 
Yeah. What did you do up there? Remember what we done with the plants? Yeah. What did you do there? Plug some plugs. Yeah. And we sat up there, didn't we? And we had a barbecue one day, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, welcome to Lee Bank Square's Purple Garden. Um, we're here as a recycled garden, reclaimed things. Um, we grow our own fruit, vegetables, salad, things like that. Um, everything here has been either donated or we found and recycled it. Um, unfortunately, some people don't like it and vandalise it, um, but the majority love it. Uh, we have visitors from all kinds of uh, different community gardens. Um, we've had the floating cinema here. We've had Hackney Wick festivals here. Um, Hackney Wicked art festivals also part. We we also do part of that. Um, so please just follow us and have a look. How do you think the, the community could uh, use that space? Like oh, mate, markets, you could have all sorts happening on there, couldn't you? You know, I don't like shopping in textiles, things like that. I'd rather shop from farmers, you know, you have farmers markets bringing up all the other place, don't you? And, um, I don't know, I mean, it, there could be uh, benches there or there could be a bandstand there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is like sometimes when you walk past here you get like a really nice area and then you walk past another bit and it's like completely destroyed so it'd be kind of nice to have like an even area with like everything. Uh, it could be a display ground, it could be quite nice. But other than that, a few trees to stop the cars but I like it as a like, space. I'd quite like to see it as be like a cool skate park. Um, and I think that this is a really good place to have a mural. Um, you know, I think it would be nice to have something that was community-led. So, you know, a mural that was representative of the community and what people wanted to see here. So it just looked more attractive and inviting. Uh, These areas, uh, they could be made into wildlife areas so that uh, uh, it would benefit uh, the bugs, insect, birds of the area. Because with all this uh, building up of buildings, they lost a lot of their natural sites. So these areas, although they're very small, they could contribute to the welfare of the uh, bugs, birds, and stuff that lives in the city. Not really, it just needs tidying up because it's under the motorway. You know, it's just the, um, what do you call it, the flagstones need replacing. If this was all done ill, it'd be okay. Yeah, so yeah, and some lights, some lights. Yeah. It's more community centres for the young people to go to, especially at night, especially now when they've got no work, they don't know where to go through the day. So that would be a good thing. A little play area for like kids. Like, for, for kids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they like, have somewhere to go, like natural um, dancing and stuff like that. You know, instead of, um, you know, yeah, talking natural, not artificial. Yeah, that was. Is that all right? Thanks. All right. Anybody can come. If there's free space, use it.
only green area, I think, mm -hmm. because there's not, not too much uh, green areas. Okay. So. 